little CGI earth that they have on the seat in front of you on the plane and you can do this yourself all of you who fly it just does not make sense on anything other than on a flat earth map and they actually show a flat earth map in the explanation of the flight paths you keep looking at it and you see you keep seeing the flat earth map when it comes down to me they, they can't screw around like in uh, military planning and flight paths and things like that they have to use the flat earth map and they do it's gonna you're gonna find these anomalies and the only way to make sense of it is um, with the flat earth map first of all since the earth is flat and there's a firmament above us there is no such thing as satellites when space-based ADSB is available in 2018, full and continuous surveillance will have a dramatic impact. On how They're going to start the using satellites the result will be a to use GPS on planes in 2018 and substantially reduced greenhouse gas emissions. This is just one of the many ways in which NAV Canada is leading positive... ...to show you these flight paths. Pay very close attention to these flight paths from Canada to England. Our customers and their passengers, the flying public. They're saying that there are all these problems because they can't track planes and so they have these huge swaths of lanes where the when the planes leave land they have to stay in their lane all the way over to Europe they can't deviate because they'll become too close and uh, risk collisions so they're saying that they're taking the shortest route from A to B and then they also say that they don't take the shortest route because of the winds but here, if GPS is real and satellites are real, why would they have to do any of these position reports with voice? That's nonsense. It's verbal. The most important being the jet stream. Tracks to Europe use the jet stream to their advantage by routing along the strongest tailwinds, reducing jet fuel. And why do they always have to show a CGI globe? Because there's no GPS and no satellites. Oh, now it's going to change. Look at that satellite bullshit. Approximately 60 nautical miles. Aircraft following on the same track must be spaced 10 minutes apart, approximately 80 nautical miles from the aircraft in front of them. Vertical separation of 1,000 feet must be maintained between aircraft above or below. As they transit the ocean, aircraft provide position reports of their actual locations, either through data link or voice. Right now, satellites can't reach over oceans and remote areas of the world. What's that tell you? And look at these tracks. This is, pay close attention to these flight paths. Did you see that? Mark it in your mind. Environment provides little flexibility for pilots to request changes to altitudes and speeds. When satellites are available, come on. And also, take a look closely at the distance of separation, the gap between Greenland and these flight paths. Look closely. Look at the planes. They're flying south of Ireland to go to Canada. All these flights are going to Canada. They're flying south of Ireland. The only planes coming out of the Irish coast are the ones that originated in Ireland or Scotland, perhaps. All right, keep that marked in your mind. 10 or 11 p.m. Eastern, you might have noticed something. Perfect lines of planes stretching all the way to Europe. These are just some of the over 2,000 daily Perfect lines? Look at that. Across the Northern Atlantic. Perfect so lines. Flights, there just has to be organization. And it bears no resemblance to what they just showed. You may think it's this, a straight line. Now remember, that south or north of Ireland. This curved line is a straight line because, despite what some may think, the Earth is curved. 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 From New York to London, the curve you see on a flat map isn't too extreme. And watch, they're going to use the flat map. The most direct route is not this, but this. 
No. Look. It makes a lot more sense if you look at a North Pole oriented map, Atlanta to Europe, travel on the exact same route as planes from Charlotte, Washington, Baltimore, travel on the exact same route as planes from Charlotte. Sure, it makes sense on a flat earth map. That's what you showed. You showed a flat earth map. Eastern, to time their arrival for early morning on Earth. That means that there are potentially hundreds of planes. Is that over the North Atlantic, there is no radar. You see, radar only extends about 250 miles offshore. Transatlantic planes can be more than a thousand miles from shore. That's why every morning, the route planners at Gander Air Traffic Control Center in Gander, Newfoundland, publish the day's North Atlantic tracks. For the most part, Gander Center follows these Okay, so the tracks that they're showing now, these are the actual... ...the most amount of planes on the most efficient route to Europe. The tracks are labeled, Zulu being the southernmost route... Hey, look here, it's the Blue's Clues guy. <laughs> they got him working. Waypoints are fixed spots that are from where a plane hit the Pentagon on 9-11. The waypoints read, we will never forget, September 11th. Since the North Atlantic tracks change every day, the modem just gives the entry and exit waypoints and, and then coordinates for the route in between. Since the track coordinates are pre-programmed into the autopilot before takeoff, there's no reason to name them as waypoints, since they won't be given over radio. In the case of this flight, we're requesting track whiskey, and more than likely, Gander Control Center will give us permission. Although, sometimes they'll tell us to take a different track, usually because we're closer to another plane than the minimum separation distance. Since it's much more difficult to know where planes are over the North Atlantic, they're required to... I want to know... Wow. I'm fixing the fact than the normal five miles in areas with radar coverage. Assuming we're granted clearance, we'll head towards the Raffin waypoint and make sure that our satellite communication systems are working. Then we'll check to see if our high-frequency radio is working, a backup in case other communications go down. Minutes later, just after passing Raffin waypoint, the controller will say, Radar service is terminated. Have a good night. And we're on our own. All the North Atlantic tracks are preloaded onto autopilot, so there's really nothing to do except wait. When we hit 30 degrees west, we'll enter the Shanwick airspace approaching Western Europe. We switch our radios to Shanwick's frequency. We fly a few more hours to our oceanic exit point, Gunzo Waypoint, meaning we've successfully traversed the Northern Atlantic. Okay, so taking a look again in this video, you can see, look, we came pretty close to Greenland. We came in near Labrador City, all right? And we we didn't bisect Ireland. We we went through the northern half of Ireland, okay? Um, almost to the area known as Northern Ireland, which is the extreme north of Ireland. And it's just, I mean, look at where we came in, where we made landfall. It's amazing because look i mean look at this we came out of london and we turned and we went extremely north and then where we came in if you look at this i mean we when i looked out the window i could see greenland i mean i think we're even closer to greenland than this shows so when i looked out the window i didn't see water i saw greenland and okay this is showing as we were descending and here we're at ground level and they have on the uh, CGI animation of the of the screen the earth was curved and so once again here I mean look just just have a look at this this it speaks for itself and compare this if you want to go back earlier in the video compare to those flight paths they gave where they were going south of Ireland. You you were flying over the water, the ocean water, miles and miles and miles south of Ireland on all of these tracks to Canada. And so now to make sense of it all, look, I took the flat 